So I got 62. Wow, what a gorgeous hole this is. Isn't this cool? So I think that pin's kind of right in the front. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say about 50. We gotta keep it in the air for 50, 55, 52. So, normal day, normal conditions. Like what, how many yards are you trying to hit it? Like what number do you have in your mind? Um, like 58? Yeah, 58, because it, you know, it'll release down to the hole. There's tons of green behind it. What is it actually? Did you say it's 50? 62. 62? 62 is hole. Okay. So and the wind on this particular hole swirls a little bit. Uh, and I'm feeling it right now, a touch of hurt. A touch of hurt, 62. I'm just gonna go a soft six, just kind of a chip. Plenty, plenty of green behind it. So again, just kind of rehearse what I want it to feel like. I've got a spot. See that tower up on the hill, just left yeah, of the hole. Yeah, radio thing. That's almost my spot all the time on this hole. Yep. All right. So just setting it up to that. Oh. Oh shoot! <laughs> shoot. <laughs> that was a little too soft. <laughs> You never want to say anything about anybody else's shot until you hit your <laughs> shot. Because there's always a worse shot on the on deck. Right, I got my little spot here. I have seven. Yeah, but I, I, I should have hit seven. I'm, I'm, that tried. way you could have been a little bit more Yeah, zippy. man, I tried yeah. to be super soft. It's kind of glancing, but it'll be okay. It'll be yeah. just short of the green. Yeah, on the chipping area. Just out in the toe. And that's the, you know, that's the thing when, a lot of times when, when we don't hit balls, uh, for me, it, it'll generally take, you know, four or five or six holes just to feel my body getting in rhythm. Mm -hmm. And until then, I, for me, I feel like my mind will get involved and try to help things. Yeah, and that's where that's where things will just kind of. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of when I went and watched Tiger Woods when he was doing his event over in uh, Sherwood. I saw him do something that it's like I think it like almost like the, the the almost final level or boss level of of club control is when he was hitting seven iron with a full swing all the way back all the way through every yardage from like seventy yards to like two hundred and thirty yards. Yeah, he was in such good control of his positions and feels that he could recycle it all the way up and still only hit it 70 yards yeah. or you know keep that same thing that's just owning your feel and it's hours and hours of practice and years and years of practice to right. develop that feel because getting all these components organized at at different paces it, it it's hard it takes time yeah there, there's so many things that you have to learn of, of hey when i go at this pace what is my hip doing what does this do and how does that going to get out of the way i don't know until right. i feel it right so like we did it's the not one. it's not like a a mental checklist but you're just kind of like having that body awareness throughout your whole system it's, as it's you're doing. having that body awareness and that's that's the sign of a good athlete you know male or female and when an athlete with whatever their sport is has good body awareness it's magical right it's that was awesome. the that was the Michael Jordan thing. Like he would get into amongst, you know, like four guys all collapsing on him at the same time, and he'd find a way to weave through everybody and yeah. finish the place. And yep. soccer, same thing. Yeah, and this uh, this tee shot was a uh, huge lack of body awareness. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's all mental. <laughs> so obviously, I'm way out of position. Uh, I'm looking to do my best to get this as close as I can. Uh, but at the same time, I'm looking to get it in a place where I can at least make a easy-ish bogey. In, in other words, getting it inside of like 20 feet. So I'm not looking for magic. The lie, the lie isn't, isn't great. It's not bad. It's sitting up okay, but there's some stuff behind it. Yeah. So I just see where I want it to go. 
do my best of being an athlete to deliver the goods where they need to be delivered. And it was a little softer than I thought. Yeah. So that's, that's the thing I have such a hard time with is when it, because I play in California, it almost never rains. So when it does rain and it's firm greens, sometimes it feels like if, if you take an easy swing, the, the wet sand makes a jump. And sometimes you feel like you take an easy swing, your club doesn't get through the sand and it goes nowhere. So it's, it's yeah. really hard for me to- It's hard to judge. To judge that. That's why this game is so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> So this should this should get to the hole. Uh, you know, all the grain, everything's working all right. working down to the right. Now, all right, if I want to land this on the green, you see where that leaf is here? Give me a landing spot, kind of like... Yeah. So like if I'm thinking here? Uh, not quite that high. A little, oh, yeah. I can go a little closer to it? Yeah, a little down it. in here. And, yeah, but it'll land. Depth-wise, right about there? Yeah. So here. Cut. Awesome. Cut. Yeah, great oh, job. Oh yeah, I'm happy with that. Sure. How do you get like, cause the, th the main thing I see with people's tempos when I was doing my, my short game exploration with some of the best short game coaches in the world, the main thing I see is like, people have like really dramatically different backswing to through swing tempos. Mm -hmm. How do you get somebody to, to get their short game tempo to like calm down and, and be a lot more even? Like I, the pitch shot I saw you hit earlier, uh, was on the par five was just so like relaxed and like even on both sides what's a good way to get people to do that it's it's buying into some information that you think is going to make you the best motion uh -huh. right so so a coach will help you organize the components to, to to hit whatever shot a high one low one from there it's you developing a skill and a and a touch and a pace where you don't have to get involved so, oh, okay. so again, there's no magic pill to, to, to buy that pace. It's you spending hours and hours developing a touch that you believe in where you can come up to a shot, whether it's on the third hole at Pechanga on Sunday or to win a tournament, and the pace is going to repeat itself without you making sure I got to go faster, I got to go slower, I got this now, Is that. it in your mind, like when you're doing training, I know it's not when you're playing, is it, is it in your mind like a one and two? Or? Uh, you know, I, I've done that before. Um, I, I have done that and I actually used Ernie L's. So with a full spring or a little one, it was just Ernie L's. Yeah, and right. you can say whatever you want. Yeah. Right? So it just helped. It's like the metronome mm -hmm. on a mind of what you want it to. Yeah, it's the name and then also the visual of thinking about how he looks. Yeah. Yeah, and for me, yeah. I'm like, I've always been a big Ernie fan. So, boy, how can we not just go Ernie L's and just have it just kind of drip through the whole thing without Ernie Ells. And if you feel any little bit of eh or slow down, yeah. then, you know, you keep finding that pace. Oh, great shot. Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> you put it in the ground. <laughs> You're the one who stuck it in the ground there. That was really that good. Honestly good had a, had that, a that chance. Actually, that, that actually might have hold out. <laughs> Now you might have hold that one. I was looking at it, I'm like, I think it's uh, <clears throat> it's like when you're driving. You're you're extremely focused, but you're not. Right. Right. Your senses are on yeah. high alert. Yeah, and you're when you're driving, you're always on the edge of like, if something crazy happens, you're there, you're to, there. to respond. But like, if you yeah. had to think about how to respond, oh yeah, yeah you're done. It's too late. Ah, son of a biscuit. Darn. What do you see there? You, you leave your blade a little. Yeah, that was kind through. of wipey like the first one. I yeah, did. it just doesn't. It doesn't square up. You just kind of block it through. So I take it back, fan it a little bit, yeah. and then hold it through. And then you hold it through. Okay. And doing it all over again. I was told by a guy, uh, Dick Huff. Uh, I think he's down in Tucson area now. This is back in the early '90s. He said two clubs: putter and and driver. So if you can drive yeah. the ball really well and putt well, yeah, you can kind of get away with a lot of the other stuff. Yeah, in between. Yeah, yeah. And there's not a lot of guys on on tour that are that are bad putters. No. And there's almost nobody that's a bad putter and a bad driver. No. It goes down to the right. I mean, the whole straightaway. 
there's there's trees left that uh, we stay out of. So again, for this one, I usually tee it low. Uh, so I take I take the the little drive and I'll hit it uh, kind of at the edge of those trees and just let the fairway and usually the wind take it just a hair to the right. <clears throat> so this is one of those little ones. You know, and the wind usually blows a little bit. So I don't hit three wood because I, I like the ball down. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll normally get some yards on the fairway here. Oh, really good shot, Eric. Well, you have like all different kinds of driver shots you use. That one will be close. All three were solid, but all three were like good for the hole, yeah. Yeah. That one's a little lower. The last one was just like all out crunch. The, the, this one was a little lower to kind of fit into this thing just and run. Trying to put it into little zones yeah. all over the golf course. That's, that's my strategy. It's the first time I tried to hit a draw and I did that. All right, so there's a little cart sign that I that I whacked. 80 yards, right? So that's so. Do I have 74 in my mind? Yeah. And then and 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 then then the run out, or do I have 80 in my mind? A little close. No, 75 or 6. Okay. See, that's what I see. I used to have always. I used to always be fixing divots right by the hole, and then like chipping from behind the green. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So all right. So, so uh, second little flag there. 75. Not the best contact. Get back there. Get up. Hey, Broly. Uh, really good shutter. Can't really see it from here. Oh, that did not do what I thought. I saw, I saw this little hump here. Oh, bogey, dude. All right, German Eric. That's good putt. Good putt. See, I didn't hit a good shot on the entire hole. <laughs> yeah. Except for the putt. Do the four. All right. That putter's pretty important. Well, this would look like a... Uh, is this a signature hole? Man, this is really good looking it hole. It is pretty. Where are you trying to aim? I see the black and white pole. How yeah, far to so that bunker? Just at the bunker, 240 to the bunker. Okay. So I'm just taking a little three wood and just, okay. just chipping it at the bunker. All right. Oh, I love that, Eric. Wow, really good shot. Really good shot. Oh, I love that. Nice. Are we going to see you at the Long Beach Open this year? I think so. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to play. Fine. It's a little left to add yeah. some distance, but yeah. probably the most solid strike I had today. <laughs> a little bit more. Aggressive, let's just waving at it. Oh, folks, look at this, so pretty. Pachanga Resort here in Southern California, an hour and a half from Long Beach, if that means anything to anybody. Right, so, so there's the, the hole, folks, and you can see it's on a little bit of a backstop there. So I'm asking Eric, yeah, are you gonna use that backstop to your advantage or, or is uh, it I'll, I'll too see. fancy? Yeah, I don't know yet. Okay. So, you know, a lot of it depends on what my number is. You know what my number is where is that that hole in relation to the backstop because a lot of times it'll it'll be closer to the front and that backstop won't bring it all the way back to the front right so you know so talking with you as we're driving up i'm looking to see where the flag is because that's yeah. the only time i can see that the flag on that green is from up there so i got 103 hole and i got 93 to the front and I had 119 to the to the top up there or kind of right into the hill yep so I don't know if we got enough 
back there to come all the way back. So I'm just going to take a 54 and play play to get it on the on the number. Uh, and that 103, I'm feeling like another maybe 10 with a little uphill in the wind. Yeah. So I'm into a 110. Oh, great strike there, Eric. Well, that's a frozen rope. Yeah. Oh, it's looking really good. Was, it, was that gap wedge? Yeah. And you were hitting it as if it was 110? About 110. And one, how far was it 13, as the, in a line? I had 103. 103 and you yeah. hitting, like it was 110 or 113? Yeah, 115. Oh, okay. Well, that shot was great, Eric. Thank you. Love to hit that kind of wedge shot. So this is like a, it's like, this is basically, this should be perfect, this club. I'm a little higher than you, so maybe, yeah. maybe like two yards off of that. Sure. But I don't even know that I have that kind of control anyway. <laughs> I'll take anything with it. No, <laughs> not many do, Brennan, and that's yeah. the thing, is everybody yeah. thinks, it, what is it, 107 or 109? I'm like, you're not <laughs> <right>. good enough to, <laughs> All right. you should be like looking in between 100 and 120. Small, medium, or large, <laughs> exactly. you know? Hit this medium, large. Yeah. All right, I want to hit this medium. Nice. Keep going. Set. Yeah, good shot. Yeah, good one. But you can see with my wedges, Eric, even here on a good lie, they're all degrees of pull. Like, yeah. I will never miss a wedge shot even a yard right right it does it looks like you're set up uh, I'll, I'll watch one closer but it looks like you're you're set up with the ball in front of the stance a little up mm -hmm. so when so, you finally get to it things are starting to exit this way i mean oh, okay. you do come down yeah. you're, you're right looks like your right shoulder yeah, yeah covers a little bit if it got in here a little bit more and covered this way versus it being like this so tr we'll try ball position and then we'll try that's how you like to to approach problems in your game or your students is like go for the simple things first yeah we start with the simple things you know if something's way off it's like uh dude, it's not going to work from there for very long we got to fix that right uh but if you know if we can make a small adjustment without tearing you apart well i'd like to start there as long as it's not a band-aid right history about the uh luisano band of indians that founded this place Amazing bridge here. This is really cool. Yeah, I have the same tendency probably a lot of amateurs would do. When there is water to cover, you always like juice it a little more, you know? Yeah. Great shot here, Eric. I'll, I'll, Thank you. I'll let you make your birdie here. Sure, oh, and then it. look down there, folks. That's kind of cool. A little kind of example of the way people lived not very long ago, 300 years ago, something like that. Oh, you made it? I did. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, good hey, we, we, we didn't get, be. I was looking. I was looking at the, uh, the huts. Yeah, we might be back in those huts soon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Do you have any wildlife skills? Trapping, hunting? Fishing. Fishing? Yeah. I'll survive on fish. Oh, man. Uh, darn. Yeah, good putt. Nice Thank part. you. Thank you. All right, six hole at, at Pachanga. This is amazing. How far of a drop is that to our fairway? Um, I think it's... 100 feet? I think it was 75 yards. I think one of my buddies had a rangefinder. So, and the elevation was 75 down. I think it was 75 down. Wow. Yeah. So it's like a 20 story building. Yeah, it's down there. That's amazing. All right, so where are you aiming? Are you aiming so to hit it I want at it the birds or, or at the barber pole? At the barber pole. Okay. Uh, where are the birds? Um, so yeah, just straight at the barber pole. This is a 488 yard par four.
It's aggressive, but you hit it so hard that I think it's yeah. gonna be perfect. Hit it. All Didn't right. hit it great, but it's perfect. Now, do you have contacts or leg sticks in, or you still see that sharp? I can still see that. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah it's just just left and past the barber pole. I have loose. problems on par threes usually are, are the kind of holes that will have this much elevation change, but like sometimes you feel like your shoulder, you look, you keep looking down. You feel like, do you do the thing where you then you try to pick something out that's actually on your level, or how do you not get your aim screwed up by being so high up? Uh, I'm just looking down where I want it to go uh, and letting my body kind of tell me what's comfortable. So I don't, okay. I don't drag it through anything cerebrally. Yeah. I just... So you're seeing the target and then your, your body's responding to what you're trying to do. That's it. It's that simple. Beauty. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, really good. In the tendency here, when I see most people, is they'll try to give it just that little bit more. Right, you're like, you're way up here, you're like, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. And obviously left is dead. Because how many yards do you think total you hit your shot? Like um, 340, 320? Probably, yeah. From up here? From up here, it's probably 330, 340. But, yeah. you know, if we're flat, it's probably 280. Yeah, right. Right? right. I mean, so... So, you know, I'll see them and they'll, and they'll make sure it doesn't go left and then they spray yeah. it and hit it way right. Yeah. Like, look, just pick something out there. I gave you the information. It's this far to cover th that bunker and to get it to here. And so there's your zone. So set up to something comfortable in that zone and let it go there. Don't try to make sure it goes there. Just let it go there. Right. It's given that little bit extra. Mm -hmm. We already said. So you just, trouble. you just set up and let your body respond to it. Yeah. But once I give it a little bit more. All right, so I, I got, uh, I'm gonna play this as if it's 136 yeah. right there. Nothing fancy. So more like. Would that, would that 36 a normally be a nine for it or a wedge? 136? Yeah. Yeah, so this would be less, less than this nine iron. Yeah. Yeah, this, this will be about a, a you know, they're saying like low, medium, high, or, yeah. or small, medium, big. Right. This would be like a small. So, it's a little above my feet, but I got it here. here. Just like that. Pretty. Roll, baby. Oh, yeah. That's it. A couple feet. Uh, 10 yeah, feet. Keep going. Good shot. Good. Yeah. So that one, Eric, because I've been having these pool issues, I think it's really important based on what you said on the wedge ones, that in transition, it really has to f fall on its own a little bit uh -huh. before I start giving it something. Uh -huh. Yeah, again, when we can be fairly passive in the transition, it allows our hands and arms to head down towards low point. And then, mm -hmm. then they get picked up by when we start turning. But if we're active up there, we could get it you know, away from that slot. Yeah. And now it's already working over here or falling behind. Right. But do you think that, and this is the thing that came up when we made our video about that on the range over at uh, Rancho, California. Do you think people have the patience to wait for it to fall like that? And will that crumb, will that waiting for it to fall be a problem when it's under pressure? Yeah, because it's a new feel. So. Because uh, like when you're under pressure, you go to the top and you kind of, you want to do something. You yeah, know. you want to get it over with. Yeah, right. Especially you see them with putting. It's like they get here and they want to get it over with. Yeah. Um, so it's a new feel. So how, how do you get it to where it's not new? Just keep doing it. Oh, okay. So, so then you build the, the feel and then you can trust it without getting involved and trying to rush it. All right, what do you got here? How many yards do you have? I got 35. But you're going to hit it as if it's uh, 121? Tw yeah, probably 20. I got a little pitching wedge, but we got some wind. So I'll go to 54. Yeah. And hit uh, hit a similar shot you did. Might go a little bit higher. Oh, good one, Eric. Go, baby. And roll. Yeah. Ah, shoot. Need a little pitching wedge. Wrong club or wrong tempo? Uh, 
uh, yeah, probably the wrong, just a little bit of the wrong shot. Okay. Yeah, I could have hit that club, but drove it harder. I didn't think I needed to, but now I'm feeling the wind go not so much down as it is to the left. Right. Sit, baby. Ah. So if I'm trying to get there at die speed, what? How much do you no, like? No, because it? it's back uphill a little bit. One cup. One cup. What? To the right. One cup out. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't move a whole lot. It's just gonna chew in that. Oh no. I did like going that way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, my right. It's going that way. That's <laughs> okay. That's why you're not a caddy. It was going right to right. <laughs> did you think it was going right to left? Yeah, I did. I oh. see. I saw this big hill. Yeah. That's, and then I saw this low spot here. Yeah, that's what I mean. This this little hill. That's yeah, they are hard to read. Yeah, because they're. Ah, oh, shoot. We would have to go. What number hole is this, Eric? Seven. All right, hole number seven. And Eric is going for it on this hole. A very interesting par four where he can reach with a good shot, especially a little helping wind here. How good is that, Eric? Go in the hole. That's a little left. That's got to be good. Uh, if could be, if that's good. not good, you have no business hitting driver because <laughs> <laughs> that was like 10 steps left of the hole. Yeah.